Good morning, folks. Today is a day about the atmosphere. We've got storms, storm watches, climate, and the global electric circuit. We've also got some space weather, which you might notice here, so let's get started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. First, it's easy to notice the coronal hole facing Earth, larger one incoming behind it. At the leading edge of the Earth-facing coronal hole, new brightness of an active region appears, and those are indeed sunspots. As the Disaster Prediction app notified you last night, the blank disk is broken, a multi-umbra system developed yesterday and is settled into a lateral spread with beta magnetism. No solar flares from the region yet, and at this point in the 11-year cycle, there's no guaranteeing it will do so at all. But alas, that is why we watch, and we are also going to be keeping an eye on these plasma filaments dancing over the incoming limb into our view. Let's take a look next at the solar wind. Minor intensification in plasma speed occurred overnight as the phi angle, up in blue, took interplanetary magnetic fields streaming from Sun to Earth and flipped them back Earth to Sun. The event is minor and not even a geomagnetic disruption of the lowest order can be seen. We do have more solar wind incoming from those coronal holes, however. First one here, its wind should arrive towards the middle of this upcoming week. Let's shift to the weather, starting in South America, where an Antarctic low to the south reached its convergence line up over the east coast and brought significant flood potential to the region, not to mention the lightning line with it, vastly more intense than the diurnal electric explosion over the rainforest. Looking ahead to the U.S. west coast and a bit of Mexico, Hurricane Rosa is going to hit Arizona the hardest by far before it races up towards the Midwest, but afterwards a low is going to approach from the west-northwest and that's when LA and San Diego will get in the mix as well. There is another hurricane that will seem very lost between the front and its westward pull, and it won't start heading back at that coastline for about a week to ten days from now. Lots before that though. Speaking of lows and pressure, let's go to the global electric circuit. Atmospheric energy goes up and down through the columns, down from the ionosphere in fair weather high pressure and back up in the storms. The ceiling is that ionosphere and the floor is between the troposphere and the mantle, highly variable, and we will use that Stanford GEC PowerPoint to reintroduce a 1936 concept, the Carnegie Curve. Regardless of where we are on Earth, the atmospheric electricity hits a peak around 1900 UTC every day, without fail, that's about lunchtime in California. Below that, even while different regions take their lightning cycle based on their day and night, the overall curve they make together matches Carnegie very well. However, this does not seem to apply in Pakistan, where a double oscillation that deviates from the Carnegie curve is said to exist. One can imagine another look at that curve is warranted after so many decades and our electrically changing Earth. Few quick notes to end here. While warming the last hundred years is found in the summertime tree ring records, going back 300 years shows a decreasing temperature trend even with the more recent warming. They say their temperature in the Himalayas is wholly driven by volcanic forcing, ENSO and PDO, and the last two are well known to be modulated by the solar cycle and particle energy. Lastly, folks, hopefully we recall the Yale University and Woods Hole news of a cold climate bomb waiting in the Arctic. We did that interview three months ago with one of the scientists, and indeed, they left for their expeditions earlier this month, did their work, are on their way back, and you'll recall, they're trying to determine if the Beaufort Gyre has begun to release that cold climate bomb or not. Can't wait to find out. Folks, the Disaster Prediction app is one of the best ways to keep an eye on space weather and support the entire community. And this will be the last reminder on this. First batch of pre-orders is shipping out already. Second pre-order is expected to arrive this week, and this, today, is the last day to pre-order at the discounted price. Layman's way to become an expert in how the sun affects weather, earthquakes, technology, and human health. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.